Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own velvet scrunchies just like these ones here. These are perfect if you are holding market stalls or if you are wanting to make some stocking filler gifts, things like that. They work up really really quickly and they don't use too much yarn. So these are absolutely perfect for those quick little projects or little gifts. Now I'm going to be using Maker's Corduroy yarn in the color Diana today, which is this beautiful lilac purple color. And the recommended hook size for this yarn is a 7mm, but I'm actually going to be using an 8mm today because we don't want our scrunchie to be too stiff. We need it to be nice and floppy, I guess, and flexible because obviously it needs to be able to stretch and wrap around our hair. So I'm going up a hook size, so I'm using the eight millimeter hook. You will also need some scissors, of course, and you are going to need a hair tie or some sort of elastic. I like to use these ones because they are seamless. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So as you can see, this hair tie doesn't have a seam. So it is just one entire piece. And I like using these because I feel like they are less likely to break on the inside of your scrunchie. Some hair ties that you can buy do have a bit of glue. They are glued together. Um, and I feel like they're just not as durable and they are more likely to break on the inside of your scrunchie which we don't want so i like to use these ones that are just one entire piece these are also really nice and stretchy which is great um, but you can use any hair tie or any kind of elastic that you like you may also need a darning needle at the end i'm not going to be using one i'm going to show you how to just use your hook to kind of weave in your ends but if you would prefer to use a darning needle you are more than welcome to use one of those instead okay so once you have everything ready to go we are ready to get into the tutorial So to get started, you want to take your yarn, your crochet hook and your hair tie or elastic and we're going to start off first with a slip knot and popping that onto our hook and now we are going to begin our foundation chain. What will determine the length of the foundation chain will just depend on the size of your hair tie and how stretchy it is, I suppose, because we want our foundation chain to be as long as our hair tie is when it is fully stretched out. And I don't mean just from this point to this point, I mean all the way around. So the complete circumference, I guess, if that's the right word to use, of our hair tie. So all we're going to do is start chaining. You don't really need to keep track of stitch count or anything like that. You just want to start chaining until you have the correct length. And of course you can stop and measure it as many times as you need to until you have achieved the correct length. So I am just chaining and once I think I have got the correct length, I will stop and measure it against my hair tie. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and just lay this down like that. So looping it around and going to measure it against my hair tie. So stretching it all the way out. I can see it's still a little bit too short, so I'm just going to add in a few more chains. And you would rather it be a little bit too long rather than too short. So if you're unsure, just add in an extra few stitches just to be safe. Okay, so again, measuring against my hair tie. And that looks pretty good to me. Okay, so now what we want to do is lay our foundation chain out flat, finding the other end and looping it back around and we're going to slip stitch through that very first chain to join and make a loop. Just like that. So you should now have a loop that looks a little bit like this. Now what we want to do is chain one 
and working our first stitch into that stitch that we just joined into, we are going to complete a half double crochet. Just like that. And now we're going to complete one half double crochet in every stitch all the way around. All right, so here I am at the end of that round. All I'm going to do now is slip stitch into the top of that very first stitch to join the round. And then I am chaining three. So one, two, three. And we are going to continue working in the round. So this stitch will count as our first stitch. So we don't have to go back into that stitch that we've just joined into. We're now moving on to the next stitch and completing another double crochet. Just like that. And now we're just going to complete one double crochet in every stitch all the way around. And we're going to repeat that for a total of three rounds. So completing three rounds of double crochet. I'm just here at the end of my first double crochet round. I just want to show you how to finish off the round and start the next one. So because this chain three does count as our first double crochet, we're going to be slip stitching into the top of that chain three to join just like that. And then we are chaining three, which will then count as the first double crochet of our next double crochet round. And now you can continue on with the next two double crochet rounds. So once you've completed a total of three double crochet rounds, I will meet you back here. Okay, so here I am at the end of my third double crochet round. Now all I'm doing is slip stitching into the top of that chain three to join. Now we are just going to chain one and complete a half double crochet into that same stitch that we just joined into because that chain one doesn't count as our first half double crochet. And now we're just continuing on with one half double crochet in every stitch all the way around. Okay, once you've reached the end of your half double crochet round, you're now going to slip stitch into that first half double crochet to join the round. And now what you want to do is leaving your hook attached and leaving your yarn attached, you want to take your hair tie and we want to place it over the top of the, I guess, cast on edge or the edge where our foundation chain is. And you just want to sit it in the middle just like this, okay? Because now what we're going to do is fold this over and we're going to join these two edges together. So our hair tie or elastic will then be on the inside of our scrunchie. You do want to try and match up the stitches as best as you can, just so your scrunchie's not all twisted. What I like to do and the way I find easiest is to find where your working yarn is attached and where your hook is. And then you've got the tail from where we started. So if you can match up those two stitches, you know that you're pretty much on track. Okay, so first of all, we are going to chain one just to give us a little bit of movement. And then we're going to find that stitch where our tail is. And we're going to insert our hook in through that stitch and then in through the stitch where our working yarn is. And then we just want to slip stitch to join those two layers together. And then we're just going to repeat that all the way around. So going into that next stitch and then again on the other layer, slip stitch to join. So just repeating that all the way around. Okay, so I've just completed my last slip stitch so my entire scrunchie is now all closed up. Now I can cut my yarn and pull that end through 
and just fasten it off. And to make sure it is extra secure, I like to tie the starting end and the finishing end together. I'm going to do three knots just to be extra safe, especially with velvet yarn because it is so soft and slippery. Um, it can quite easily come undone. So you want to make sure that it is nice and super secure. All right. Now, the best part is we do not have to sew these ends in because this scrunchie is basically a tube. All we need to do is pull our ends through with our crochet hook. So you just pop your hook in like that, grab those ends and pull them through. You'll now be able to kind of maneuver these ends around until they are completely on the inside of your scrunchie. Just like that. So now those ends are completely hidden and you didn't even have to sew them in. How good is that? And your scrunchie is now complete. So this is what it should look like. As you can see, it's beautifully soft and fluffy and it's now ready to be worn. Well guys, that wraps up today's tutorial. Thank you so, so, so much for watching as always. And if you haven't already, come join me in the Talk Yarny To Me Facebook group. The link is in the description down below. I'd love to see you there. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications so you will be notified of all my future videos. But until next time, please stay safe, be kind, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.